Hello, this is Compound Interest Stock Guy, and today we're going to be talking about a Soyuz Cannabis OSO ticker on the CSC, so stay tuned. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up if you like the video, hit the thumbs down if you dislike the video, and um, yeah, uh, before we get into this, I want to disclose I'm not a financial advisor. This is just for entertainment information purposes. Do not buy or sell a stock based on anything I talk about in this video. And buy or sell after you did your research, due diligence on your own. And uh, yeah, so Soyuz Cannabis, I've uh, I, I kind of heard about it on my letter. Um, I maybe I even saw it. I saw it another day. Like I saw it because I usually check the CSC and I see what the what's moving. Sometimes, like I try to do it um, fairly regularly because sometimes these CSC stocks can be really hot. Uh, straight up so uh, yeah I, I don't know when I saw it but anyways I bought the stock I think around somewhere around here 25 cents I might have bought it here I might have bought it around here actually to be honest and then I sold it here at about 28 cents and uh, it was probably like I don't know pretty scary actually because I didn't want to really like what if it goes to 50 cents or 75 cents or a dollar, uh, like after it goes above? But luckily enough, I was able to buy back shares on Friday and I bought even more. I bought the first time I bought a thousand shares, this time I'm buying 2,500 shares. So, yeah, uh, it's not like a huge position, but it's something that I think has a, has a lot of potential. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's 30 million shares out, so I really like that share structure and the price of 24 cent and a half cents is I think a great deal because the financing was done at around uh, 45 cents. So yeah, the 52 week high is 35 cents and the 52 week low is uh, 19 cents. All right, let's 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 get into the detailed about uh, the business, uh, how, they, how they want a, their business plan. So it says the soy's cannabis will focus on the following revenue streams: sale of bulk winternized cannabis and hemp oil to licensed producers. So I like that. Provision of toll and extraction services to licensed producers, development and sale of proprietary soy's cannabis branded and white labeled products. Cultivation of our own cannabis and hemp outdoors. Okay, I like that a lot. Now we're talking. So apparently the financing that they did before they went public was done at 45 cents. So anybody getting in is getting in at better prices than the people that uh, paid for the financing at, at the beginning. So I think that's pretty sweet. The soy is cannabis in the Okanagan is a uh, they believe in high quality concentrates are the future of cannabis. A soy's cannabis believes in the importance of customizable extraction solutions for Canada's top licensed producers. A soy's cannabis is an applicant under the Cannabis Act for a standard processing license in association with a, a soy's Indian ban in Oliver, BC. Our three phases of execution provide a multifaceted forward looking approach. So that's cool. So now they're talking global opportunity. They're talking about branding, unique and relevant brand identity, focusing focuses on Canada's fastest growing de demographics. Our facilities designed to CMG standards to allow for export through strain selection from our suppliers and specific processing control. We ensure the highest quality products. Product flexibility. We can produce a variety of products which gives access to wide ranging markets and modes of consumption. A soy's Indian band is considered one of Canada's most successful First Nation groups. Well, that's cool. The OIB has a record of leadership and success under the stewardship of Chief Clarence Louis, a Canadian Business Hall of Fame inductee. Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, who has chaired the federal government's National Indigenous uh, Economic Development Board for over 10 years. As I grew up and studied our history, I became convinced that the remedy to most of our problems was economic development. That's awesome. The OYB's pro business at the Nicomic Wine Cellars is an award-winning winery. So they they already have uh, leadership in place that has run award-winning winery um, for that Indian band. So that's that's you know that's awesome. 
uh, named Canada Winery of the Year in 2016. Wow, it, that's pretty recent too. It was opened in 2002 in partnership with Vincor now Atero Wines Canada. Miss Nick, I don't know what Nick Atero Wines is if they're on the stock exchange or something, but I might look into it later. Nick Mix Vintner Justin Hall is considered one of the first Aboriginal vintners globally. Nick Mick Wine says a winery located on OIB lands is the first original Aboriginal owned and operated winery in North America. The success of the winery has helped to bring prosperity and opportunity to the OIB ideals which a soy's cannabis intends to foster. So they have a site location. It's the process of retrofitting a 10,410 square feet facility in the Seckleman Business Park in Oliver, BC. It's a 143 acre fully serviced project developed by the OIB. The vision of the, the Seckleman Business Park is to encourage and accommodate economic development in this growth, growth region. So the three phase execution is um, they want to focus on extraction of cannabis and hemp oils for existing producers. Soy is cannabis, highly tunable, vitalis, super critical CO2 extraction systems will allow for a wide range of finished products. Our equipment for the phase has already been built and delivered, and we are finalizing the details for the initial facility retrofit. Okay, so as soon as they get this retrofit, they have already bought the four uh, vitalis super critical CO2 extraction system. That phase two will continue to focus on extraction for existing lights. In this phase, we will retrofit the balance of our facility and with additional equipment from Vitalis, double our extraction facility. We will also add packaging equipment and service to offer our customers. So the way it looks is though, they just wanna get a small part of the facility just to, just so they, they become operational very soon. So whether that's maybe, I don't know, 1500 square feet or 2000 square feet, but then later on, then they, they can, the phase two, I, I believe, if, if, um, I'm thinking on the same terms as them is then they'll have the full facility complete and then they can double their extraction capacity so maybe the first phase maybe it's even more maybe it's like 4,000 5,000 square feet and then the next one's another 4,000 5,000 square feet because I don't think they're used like a hundred percent of the whole building like there's got to be some room for administration areas Phase three of operations will be to develop and operate an outdoor cultivation facility. Asoya's Cannabis has had preliminary discussions with the OIB about lease opportunities. Outdoor cultivation about lease opportunities for this purpose. Preliminary discussions with the OIB. Hmm. Lease opportunities. Hmm. So maybe they can lease, lease land, if I'm reading that correct. They can lease it to LPs. So that they can grow. That's that. That'd be a good revenue source. That's like a crop or a IIPR style. Soy's cannabis will be using Vitalis supercritical CO2 extraction systems, allowing for customizable product for all partners and customers. The Phase One equipment has already been built and delivered. This consists of four Vitali Q90S extraction systems. So. Running 10 hours a day only on standard business days. They are designed to tolerate running 24 hours per day. 365 days per year, these machines will process approximately 50,000 kilograms of dry cannabis or hemp annually. So, and they assume 10% cannabis content will yield over 4,900 kilograms of winterized oil per year. So the price, I don't know the exact price it is for per kilogram, but it's it's like a fair amount of money. Um, I know it's in the like, I don't know, it could be like 35 million. I don't know the exact number, but it was a good enough number that I, I looked at the the price of the market cap of being around like $7 million. And I say like, based on this, that their market cap can go up a lot. Like, cause I mean, if it's going on like a three to five price of sales, and that's like a low target for cannabis companies, then I can see a lot of upside. I mean, when they get to when they keep going on with the business, they're gonna have to um, dilute more, or whether they can get a financing thing uh, from one of the banks for maybe like I don't know, 10, 15 million to to really like start boosting their capacity and their like growing um, of the extraction. But 
I mean, I just looked at the 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 market cap of seven million, and it, it there's a lot of wedge. So that for me, it looked viable to to, to as a to be a shareholder. It just made a lot of sense to me that I could see upside of like five to fifteen times, to be honest. So like I could see this stock going to a dollar twenty five, even even like close to like three bucks realistically, because because this is it can just all run on hype too right like based on like a fundamental um is basically it would be uh i don't know like a buck 25 or something like that i can it'll be like realistic to be a fair value but then like when people get all hyped about it and the low share structure they can run into three bucks four bucks right so for phase two of soy's cannabis plants that to, to four more q Q90 S this with double capacity and approximately 100 with winterized output of over 9,800 kilograms. So then that's when it really gets attractive, the valuation of it right now. So they commence facility retrofit right now. So in February, it was just ret retrofit details. Now commence facility retrofit phase one retrofit complete in august so that's when that's when the hype's going to really start coming up when they start getting their um getting close to getting their processing license and especially with their low market cap and their low share structure like i can see the start getting really hyped over the 20 set it's the forefront of cannabis products right and especially because they're doing it at the right time right because this is going to be right before legalization 2.0 where they can do vape products and all that stuff like that for all the LPs. So I can see them honestly getting a big deal with one of the, these LPs. There's like 100 LPs in the system, right? So whether it's like Suniva, whether it's, I don't know, there's just so many different companies that that would probably want to have, have a deal with them. So they're probably going to be announcing that stuff soon. I mean, that's just my speculation hat on. I mean... It's not guaranteed, but that'll really add, um, that'll de-risk the, their business plan. Monthly sales of dried flower grew, well, monthly sales of cannabis oils grew 91.7. A soy's cannabis will use environmentally responsible industry lean Vitaly Q-series CL2 extraction system providing extremely high grade oils. Extracts allow for precise dosing and incorporation into a variety of products, including lotions, beverages, and edibles. I like that. Consistently dosed and purified for consumer safety products with longer shelf life and better stability. Many countries only allow for extract-based cannabis products. Phase 3. I like this part. Phase 3 of our business will be able to cultivate a captive, captive supply of hemp and cannabis outdoors on OIB lands. The Okanagan Valley is one of the hottest and driest places in Canada, making it an ideal location for outdoor cultivation, allowing us to cultivate at a very competitive cost per gram. A soy's cannabis has had preliminary discussion with the OIB about securing land for cultivation. The OIB is very supportive and has indicated the leasable land will likely be available to a soy's cannabis when required. Okay, so the leasing thing is just for themselves, right? if I read that right. Marketing presidents, so they're talking about Lakota, was founded by Creeman Richard Stewart, who wanted to use indigenous images and messaging to provide a natural and effective product based on traditional knowledge. Yeah, so I mean, a soy's cannabis is is like part of the the soy's Indian band, and so so they're like they want to uh, like show off their heritage, right? Like that's the thing with uh, First Nations and stuff like that. They really like to show off their heritage. So they're talking about like Lakota um, to provide a natural and effective product based on traditional knowledge. Lakota is a widely abused product across demographics and is focused on addressing pain relief. The particular niche or the natural and healing in balm. Burt's Bee has become a widely recognizable brand. I agree. Burt's Bees make very good uh, lip balm. They're like the best. That stands by a mandate of natural products. Founded in 1984, Burt's Bees began as a small scale craft operation where brand ethos of responsible farming and sustainable developed and remains today. These are branding concepts that bring value to brands like Soyuz Cannabis product offerings. I like that. Will include oils, creams, gel capsules, and various other product opportunities. I like these branding. Like that's a nice logo, in my opinion. Alignment, First Nations, Inuit and Métis 
population was growing at four times the rate of the rest of the Canadian population. An estimated 20% of the Canadian workforce will be indigenous persons by due to the rapid growth of younger demographics. FNM Canada is expected to be under underserved and many communities are aware about a lack of consultation and engagement. A soy's cannabis sees it as a meaningful opportunity to engage with communities on topics such as education and empowerment. We will capitalize a shift in Canadian set where 80% of believe that at, in the economic uh, social fabric and want private sector businesses to participate. Yeah, I, I think private businesses, I mean, this isn't a private business, it'll be public. It, it is public right now, but yeah. Soy's cannabis sees an opportunity to create a socially responsible that supports promised rec efforts with Canadian indigenous people. Yeah, I mean, they, they there's a chance like they could get a grant for growing the business too, right? From the government. So like maybe the government gives them like five or $10 million to, um, to build the business further. By hiring OIB members whenever practical, a soy's cannabis will create opportunities in a highly specialized skill set and foster the skill growth of OIB community members. So issued an an uh, outstanding 31.17 um, 170,000. The benches debentures 6.833 and warrants 31 million and options. Okay. So there's a few more shares to be added. Uh, sale, but the thing with the warrants, like that's that's a, a guaranteed future um, cash if it if it. So it's not really that bad. Um, can be can, warrants that can generally shall generate approximately fifteen point three million. So it's gonna add more shares to the float, but that's like based on on about like a. 50 cents per share warrant so so that's like awesome right that'll be 15 million dollars based on 50 cents per share and you can get this stock it's 25 cents so uh options shall generate approximately nine hundred thousand dollars so i mean they're gonna get some cash coming in with their uh debentures and warrants um they just have to bring the the stock price to like a probably certain number and then all those warrants will be called in maybe. I don't know the details, but I'm sure when it starts like going up a lot, people will want to transfer. Sell so bulk with winterized cannabis and hemp oil to like with input material source from other licensed producers. Provision of tolling extracts to licensed standard and micro cultivators. Development and sale of proprietary source cannabis brand and white labeled products with inputs material source from other licensed. As we evolve, from other LPs, as we evolve, we will cultivate our own cannabis and hemp outdoors to use in our bulk oil sales, branded and white label products. Yeah, I mean, I, I look forward to them evolving. So let's look at the management. Um, Mr. Goldberg is a prof chartered professional and a former senior partner in two major accounts. He has over 30 years of and was the head of the public company. He has industry expert in cannabis cultivation, aggregation, distribution, retail mining, Oil and gas. I'm looking for some gold, right? He was act also active in the medical cannabis industry and until recently was interim CEO of an integrated licensed producer in patient agriculture. Well, that's cool. He's the CEO. He was interim CEO of an integrated licensed producer. I'm not sure. I wonder where that was. Uh, COO. Uh, is a graduate of Osgood Hall Law School and a member of the law. In addition, having worked in both full service and he has worked as an investment banking and was in charge of, from a, uh, for an international medical real estate. Mr. Mahalter has over 25 years in accounting, moved to the Middle East, worked as vice president for a private group of service companies in Toronto, quality assurance manager. Hold, Dr. Liu holds a PhD in microbiology from Murdoch University. He has more than 10 years in quality assurance and regulatory affairs for strictly regulated health products, including medical cannabis. Well, that's the key ingredient that they're going to use. So it's nice if the guy's got experience So in other natural health products. He has worked extensively with a wide range of herbal extracts that possess various medicinal properties. Dr. Liu has significant knowledge and experience in interfacing with health cannabis. The U.S. Food and, Drug and other international regulatory, Dr. Liu is one of six members to, of the Health Canada Techn 
for natural. The group was formed to develop GMP standards and licensing regulations to improve the level of quality insurance for natural health products sold in Canada. Okay, sure. Did we already go over him? Yeah, we did. Michael Ash. Mike, Mr. Ash, he's the director, brings a wealth of pharmaceutical industry expertise in the areas of domestic and international sales and distribution and was identified for, that owned the company as Mr. Ash was president of Nutrilab Canada, where he developed and launched private label brands of vitamins. From 1997, Mr. Ash held the, the role of senior uh, pharmaceuticals, where he successfully grew sales of vitamins and over the counter from $50 million to close to $100 million. That's awesome. He was able to accomplish substantial sales growth due to his strong retail relationships, allowing the business to become the number one supplier of private label over the counter pricing from 1984 to 1984. 1995 held progressive sales roles of Appletex Inc. Appletex Inc. is a very big company, very big. They're a pharmaceutical big company, uh, including the role of managing director international, where he was accountable for for the company's generic. He holds a BA in political. Appletex, uh, I believe, uh, in their their connector with uh, CanTrust. I have to. I have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure. Sara Lee, in an early advocate of the benefits of pharmaceutical application of cannabis, Mrs. Irwin was the director of investor relations of Canaset Therapeutics, a cannabid, an early stage cannabinoid pharmaceutical that in 2000 became the first publicly traded cannabis company in North America. Huh, Canasat. I gotta look at that. I'm gonna look at that later. You guys can look at it as well. Uh, Mr. McGann is the managing power partner of Thought Launch Capital Investment Space. He has also served head of investment bank for Mackey Research. He has also served as vice chairman and head of investment banky for Mackey Research Capital Corporation. Oh, that's good. Mackey is a pretty big uh, investment banking company. <sighs> that's enough anyways uh you guys can read this you guys can read this for yourself go to a soyas cannabis dot com and then you can go to investors part and they can read the this presentation you can learn more about the business this is the context 416-460-3000 416-450-3271 and these are the emails t and Devani E as Soyuz, G Goldberg as Soyuz Cannabis. So yeah, if you can try to get, get in contact with these guys um, to learn more about the business, if you're interested, I hope you liked this video. I hope you felt it was informative in helping you to learn more about a Soyuz Cannabis. And uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a small shareholder with uh, 2,500 shares I bought. So that's my disclosure. And uh yeah, I hope you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe for future content, information purposes, and until next time, cool. peace.